And like even one of my five year olds, she's very emotional about it. And she says, um, um, one of them said, Mum, I don't want to be in a box in the ground. Um, let me see. And the other one um, says, Mark, I don't want you to die. And that, because she knows how unwell I am, but she doesn't realise how unwell she is. We seen probably about 30, 40 doctors and specialists. Um, we were told anything from his rashes, uh, our rashes all over our body, that it was eczema. Uh, we were misdiagnosed with scabies. Um, when the scabies didn't disappear, um, we were told we were delusional, uh, had mental illnesses, we were looking for attention, um, hypochondriacs. I've seen over 70 doctors being misdiagnosed with various different diseases, being told that I'm crazy, have had to learn to walk again, have spent over $100,000 out of pocket for, for various different diagnoses and treatments, which have all been wrong. I have chronic neurological Lyme disease. It is absolutely disgusting that this disease is not recognised in Australia. Lyme disease is an infectious disease that's transmitted by blood-sucking insects and most commonly it's ticks and it's a disease that's a slowly developing disease in the sense that if you have a tick bite you might have had five years ago it might take you months and years before you develop the disease or you see the clinical symptoms so you don't attribute your clinical symptoms to the tick bite and that's the most important thing because it's a slow developing disease and the second thing is it's a great imitator it imitates a lot of other diseases so, so the symptoms vary between individual and most commonly imitated diseases include modern urine disease parkinson's alzheimer's multiple sclerosis chronic fatigue syndrome autism lupus and many more um, i have a loss of balance which affects me um, doing simple tasks, looking down and shutting my eyes when um, dizziness also affects me along with other speech and memory problems. In a sense, it's not a rare disease. It is probably a very common disease, but we don't detect it because in Australia nobody's looking for it because it's not supposed to exist. The wind outside on a hot day was like the winds from hell, you would imagine. <laughs> it would just burn your skin. That's what a, that's the sensation you get. Uh, it's terrible, yeah. And the other pain is like the joints, the head, uh, migraine, constant migraine headaches all the time. Yeah. Lyme disease, officially, there's no one suffering from it because it's not here. But unofficially, I am guesstimating there are half a million people suffering from Lyme disease in Australia and dying. And the funny thing is, if half a million people suffered from a certain type of cancer, I wonder how much money would the government would give on that basis, and you look at how much they ignore Lyme disease. It's ridiculous. I, I'm, <laughs> it's totally logical. Uh, I've probably had it for about 24 years now, um, the Lyme disease. Uh, I think it came about from a tick bite when I was 14 years of age. Uh, I remember getting bitten by a tick. I was very sick at the time. I think I had some time off school. Um, but then, you know, I did get a bit better, but um, not at the same time. Uh, they said I had, maybe I was depressed or, you know, I was lazy at school and all this sort of stuff. Um, so this went on for many years and then I did improve a bit. Um, but then, probably when I was about 20, 21 years of age, I got very sick. Um, yeah, I was um, probably in bed for uh, you know a good few years, unable to virtually move or breathe, or um, had no energy for anything. Um, times you thought you were going to die, and then the other times when you didn't think you were going to die, you wish you would die, because <laughs> you're just living in constant pain. 
every day. Um, my story with Lyme disease began when my husband, Carl, was bitten by a tick while he's working for Home and Away in Duffy's Forest. And at that time, we were very unaware of Lyme disease and he developed the symptoms because we weren't educated or known about Lyme disease, he went on to develop chronic Lyme disease. And because there was lack of information from the doctors, the doctors weren't familiar with the clinical symptoms, he was misdiagnosed. And basically due to ignorance and neglect, he passed away July 14, 2010. And I've, during his long illness, we have tried everything in our power to convince doctors that he had Lyme disease, but they refused to believe us and we were constantly being ignored and mistreated. And in the end, it was so sad that we promised each other that we would, when he got better, we would work to reverse this denial in Australia. And that's why I've set up the Karmic Manners Foundation to reverse this denial. Yeah, like I trying to find what's wrong um, without any bias, um, any political persuasions or um, being told things don't exist or you don't have things. So I'm trying to look at any possibility um, that could, could arise and I've come upon Lyme disease. Um, I, I knew the tests were expensive, but um, I had to find a diagnosis, so I sent the tests away and they came back positive, which is, um, after all these years, it's, it's a bit of a relief, I guess, and a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a waste of my life, really. Well, it, was, it took us nine months to realise that he had Lyme disease. Now, in, in, during, that, during that time, that would, the bacteria would have spread systemically and he would, that's in stage three of Lyme disease, which is in the chronic stage. So that would mean that he, to recover, he needed intensive antibiotic treatment intravenously for at least three or four years. And that would have cost the government a lot more than having a, you know, at the time he was at Duffy's Forest, if the nurse told him, go and see your doctor because you've got a tick and you could get an infection quickly and he got the antibiotics, he would still be alive today, he, didn't, he wouldn't be ill at all. And it doesn't take much to see the logic in that, that being aware and doing the right thing after a tick bite is very, very important. Prevention is better than a cure. Well, when it comes to doctors, maybe just with them being, even just having the thought in their head and being aware that it could, uh, their patient might have Lyme disease and maybe just having a, at least thinking about it or looking at the, what could be done or finding out whether the patient has Lyme disease or uh, at least uh, uh, acknowledging the existence of Lyme disease in Australia.